Dang it. What's up, YouTube? We had to clip a little bit out because I was on the wrong playlist. We've got Benny Westside and Doolam in voice chat. It's Friday, and we are going to dick around until we do a defense up recording. What were you saying, Benny? I was saying she's not like Miss Marvel. She doesn't always assist. She she grants assists to an X-Men on any X-Men turn. So you want her as striker, so her 70% blind chance turns into 91% blind here. chance. For the love of God! It sounds very logical. So, what you're saying is, I should at least go in here... Oh, I've already got her to striker 3. We'll put her on striker 3 for right now, and then if I decide to build her... Then I'll, I'll go striker. That sounds reasonable, 91% chance of landing. Unless you're doing incursion 2.2, and then it doesn't matter, nothing's gonna stick. Then it's a 9.1. That's a 9.1% chance, yeah. <laughs> it just moves the decimal points to left once. <laughs> That's right. Dude, uh -oh. Mystic's gonna suck in 2.3. Mystic is gonna be not fun at all. Val already sucked with uh, their focus. Yep. But now, like, zero. No exposed landing. Hey, remind me, if Elder shows up, I owe him a wig from yesterday. I never did put the wig on yesterday. He, he redeemed that. No, dude. NDA, what NDA? Yeah, that's the game show we're playing today. And oh boy, Scopely gave me some ammo. <laughs> Scopely gave me a lot of ammo. Yikes. <laughs> so we're hey, gonna can you wait till like that. 3 o'clock till I leave the call before you start doing anything? <laughs> yeah, Thanks. We're gonna, we're gonna stay away from all of that. We're not talking about anything new. We're just gonna talk about the old stuff. Oh. Run, remember last year around this time, whenever I would come on your stream, Lori would get pinged. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> you had like a rash of, of accidental leaks and stuff, that was funny. Why'd we stop that? I don't know. <laughs> that's a great joke. Probably because they're understaffed and they can't come to the stream anyway. Uh, Pathfinder, oh, oh. it's it's to turn it's to a, a higher chance of landing the blind. There you go. So she has seventy percent chance to blind on her basic. If she, uh, if she hits it again, that gives her an additional twenty one percent chance. Um, so you you have at least a ninety one percent chance that you've blinded somebody. Plus a little added damage. This 2.3 incursion feels different. Uh, I believe it's, what do they increase the stats? Whoops. I just lost my headphones there. Uh, they increase the stats 15%, except for resistance went up 10%. Uh, each, each difficulty goes up by 15, I think. Yep. That's a lie. I don't know I mean, anything UK, bud. Don't ask game. me. I'm not talking about it. I'm not talking about it. One thing I don't know anything about is what the blog post says, because I didn't read up on that. I have no idea about that, so. So y'all can talk, you, you guys can leak the blog post, because I don't know shit about that. All right, do we want to, do we want to start doing a defense up recording, or are we just going to continue to dick around in MSF for a while? I'm going to say I like dicking, but I decided to refrain myself. Steven, <laughs> Steven, if you read the ability description, she, only 70% of the time does she attempt to apply it. Focus doesn't increase her chance of attempting. Oh, so Steven, we're getting compensation for the compensation that went to the wrong people who were wrongfully compensated, who actually exploited and didn't need compensation. I see. Sounds like a good Friday. On her basic run. Okay. 70% chance to apply blind. In raids, always apply blind. Yeah, focus I, doesn't change that. I always thought that was... So it's a 70% chance to apply it, but doesn't doesn't then there's a resistance check on it actually yeah. applying and sticking? So it's going to be it's gonna be lower than 70% depending on the resistance check and who she's going into. Uh -huh. But adding her so a the 9.1% is now 0% in increase 2.3. <laughs> yeah, but... Who's running Jubilee and Incursion? Oh, yeah. God, I hope no one. No, I'm, I would be using her in Cosmic Crucible comps or War comps or something yeah. is what I would be doing. 
And then, um, like, similar to Cloak, everybody thought he wasn't landing blinds because his focus was low, so everybody threw sp skirmish, skirmish on him. him. But no, he like, half the time he doesn't even try to apply the blind. Striker is better for Cloak because he rewinds. Mm -hmm. Where are we at in raids, Doolum? Oh, we finished it already? I mean, we're done, yeah. We already got the 70%, so we just got to save energy for the next push, which is 80, which we're going to need the energy because we're going to yeah, have to do we're gonna need the skill energy. Nodes. Dang it, because this is, this is the um, the bio one, man. I can practically sim that, too. Yep. Uh, by the way, the mutant boss in 2.2 in and 2.3 is is unfun. Just throwing unfun, that one out yeah. There. <laughs> it's 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 not a, it's not an exciting you know, time. Honestly, I I'm stoked. I'm stoked to I be too. challenged again. I'm stoked that I'm back to playing this manually. Even what are yep. we doing? Two point one is what we're on right now. Yeah. Um, I I love that we're playing. I'm playing it manually again. I did yep. sim my my Pegasus team, but that's because they're ridiculous. I won't be manualing them until we get up to two point two at least. Um, All right. I said this before. I wanted boss notes to be hard. I want Absolutely. us. We have four. Pe we have four people potentially hitting a boss note. It's four on each side. They should be designed. If it's hard, it should it, be three. They should be designed that when you go into it with a team that is fully maxed, you cannot one shot it, and it's going to require mm -hmm. your alliance to work on the boss node. That's yep. what I want. And That's if they, what a and boss if, note is. And when, when Battle World comes, they need that mentality. When you get to the end boss, if two people out of your alliance are clearing it, they have failed. They have absolutely failed. Mm -hmm. It should require all 24 people to do something to that boss to make it happen. It should take it should take probably like 18 to 20 really good hits to take it out. And then like you have like a little bit of a buffer because it's going to be hard to really make it 24 good hits to take it out. I would say like 18 to 20 good hits. And then the other four are insurance policies in case of RNG goes wrong, whatever it is. But it should be that hard. I agree. I, I agree very much about the hardness. I don't agree or I don't like that resistance is what determines the hardness instead of health or damage. I yeah. mean, I, I think I think re resistance should always be a factor, but it shouldn't be a stumbling block. It should just be something that it's like, OK, from time to time, it doesn't land. And I need to figure out how to make this work if that didn't land. But it shouldn't be like, oh, that didn't land. It's an auto lose that that kind of that feels bad. So it would be the problem is like if it's resistance, I get it. It feels bad because then it's just like, wow, I'm just getting shitty RNG. This game's terrible. If it's health, then it's like, oh, we're just all going to time out because I'm hitting a brick wall that's not doing any damage to me. And then if it's damage, then it feels like DD3 with the Ms. Marvels assisting and just slapping us out of the out of DD3 over and over again. So it's hard to balance for sure. Right. I, I don't begrudge them the, the, the challenge, you know, but I think that they haven't been trying hard enough uh, with with certain things, dude. I'm getting some top tier questions from envoys right now, and this is great. <laughs> I I didn't read what you put. You, you asked like for us to ask questions, right? About yep. uh, for the person that you're you're uh -huh. doing. Um, yeah, I I haven't uh, figured out any questions to send your way yet. I haven't put any thought into that at all. So. Dulum, were you? Did you want like harder questions? Like, uh, yeah, I, probably. Oh, was mine too much of a low ball? Um, up to you, buddy. I think I it's can, gonna be, I, it, dude. Let let's get let's get ridiculous. I'm gonna be honest with you. Let's get let's get nuts with them. You wanna get nuts? <laughs> <laughs> um, I like. I was I like sending him questions about the story, Benny. So don't worry, you're not gonna yeah. lowball me. <laughs> yeah, send me send me questions about the story. The only person who'll be able to answer is cleaning agent. So it'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> I like the irony of my question, but I can try to find a harder question. Go for do it. We, do I we know if the Cabal team will stop the enemy team from gaining safeguard on spawn? No, because it's a passive for um, it's a passive from Iron Patriot that needs to proc. I'm almost positive. And then when they have vulnerable, then they can't gain safeguard. So I so think it's, it's kind of like the King passive. I Correct. think it's going to be order of operations. And if if he procs the vulnerables before their safeguard on spawn procs, then it should stop it. Right. I mean, wouldn't that that order of operations make it stop from happening? Doolin muted his microphone. I 
I think I tried that once and they had the safeguard on spawn. But uh, I don't know if it's a matter of like, you know how if you position somebody in the center or like the corner, it, it like uh, happens later or something. Right. I don't know if there's like a tweaking of that that'll change it. Yeah, because because it used to be the right side of the board spawned in first, remember? And like on, on when we do PvP matchups, whoever was on the right side went first. Um, there was some weird stuff there. I don't know if they ever fixed that or not. That was in PvP though. So That's right, General in... Thad. Ace is the place. That's the best hardware store to go to. Steven and Kevin, Apocalypse is passive, is in it says enemies cannot gain safeguard you on do, spawn. I don't need your Whereas uh, the leader's passive says enemies with vulnerable cannot gain safeguard. So the vulnerable has to be applied for it to prevent the safeguard. And um, what's his face? Iron Patriot only applies the vulnerable on spawn himself. So it, th in this case, it is an order of operations. Matt. Okay, let's do... I'll let you guys watch me do... You guys can see how the sausage is made. So, we... Uh, we're moving past all the ugliness of the 6th anniversary, and we're finally getting to where people are... are... basically over it. And we you can start in, enjoying the actual anniversary event, drops. which, though there wasn't any new content, right? I always say this, it's, it, was, it was another Taco Bell event. It's the same stuff applied in different ways. Uh, I've enjoyed this anniversary more than any other anniversary that, that Marvel Strike Force has had. I think the rewards were fun. It wasn't, though it, at first it looked like these events were complicated, you realize really quickly, oh, we just play the game and we're rewarded bonus stuff. And I think, I think it's the story that they put together with the Deadpool character and stuff was a lot of fun and the way that they went about uh, giving us bonus uh, attempts at farming those nodes, the rewards themselves, everything was great. And unfortunately it was overshadowed by some bad news, but um, now that we're moving past that, I think people can, I don't know, kind of enjoy what's been happening in Marvel Strike Force. Okay, that and that. What's up, a theme? Not much. It's not what I wanted to be showing. Actually, on the that's a big fat fucking lie. Everything's been up this week. <laughs> oh, a busy week for you? Work wise and alliance wise, yeah. What's it's going on with your alliance? I, I gotta go, guys. Later, Benny. See ya, Benny. Oh, your uh, your alliance is working on the new raids, right? So you're shepherding people in their raid lanes. Um, leaders retiring on Sunday. Oh, that always sucks. Yeah. That always sucks. That's a feel bad moment. How long's the leader been a part of the alliance? Huh? How long has your leader been a part of your alliance? Uh, probably a year or longer since before I joined. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I hope they're moving on to greener pastures. Tell them Helldivers is a lot of fun if they're not enjoying Marvel Strike Force. <clears throat> We've been Stop making a lot Asian. of those jokes already because a good portion of the Alliance plays Helldivers. Yeah, I've seen Dorky was streaming it uh, last night. I actually play it every now and then with uh, the person who's going to end up being first officer. Um, cleaning agent, how come you never join us on voice? to go over these defenses and share your intimate knowledge of the game. You've been playing this game as long as anyone, maybe longer than most everyone, in fact. He's too busy taking maple syrup shots. Probably. Getting drunk on the rup. That's what kids are <laughs> calling these days, right? You shorten the word, you just take three random letters from the middle of the word and make a new word out of it. So it's the rup, that's what we're calling it. All right. Um, this is Dave's roster that we're going to be looking at. Hold on a second. Um, let's Dave at. Come on, Discord work. Dave is 47 and a half million TCP, and they are in plat three. 
smaller than me and further in crucible than me so and yet they still come I mean, to me for a... advice sorry <laughs> i was gonna joke that's a lot of people <laughs> all right so we've got uh this is the noir secret defenders Mm. I mean, it's okay. Um, I'm finding I'm finding this to be something that people they don't even hesitate and they throw new warriors at it, even though there is a percentage chance to fail. And I, I I'm not as excited by this. It's a thing to do, and I don't know how valuable they are on offense. You can use them for some things, but it's not like it's a necessary team to have on offense. So I don't know. You want to know how to get rid of the RNG of this fight with new warriors? How? Just throw in Lizard over Dagger, and then there's no RNG. Yeah. Noir goes, and then Lizard goes before Ms. Marvel and has a taunt, and then, then it's over. Oh. Can I add a level of counterpoint as to SD's value on offense? What's that? For one, huge benefit against any dorm team, like dorm Hasgard, super clean, no RNG. They can beat Dorm Extreme. They can beat Extreme Comps in certain rooms. Oh, they rooms can beat Dorm right Extreme? Setup. Yeah. I I've didn't know that. Used... Well, that's pretty useful there. Well, they take out the revive, so yeah. Yeah. If I end Black up... Cat takes the revive. Right. Gives Actually, it to herself. she doesn't because of the evade. They still beat the team with them having the revive. But if I end up using Darkhold on Infinity Watch, I tend to beat Dorm Extreme with SD Vulture. So, so wait a minute, hold it back up. You're saying that, because in Black Cat's kit, it says if enemies spawn with invade, remove the invade and she, or not evade, it, remove the respawn, revive, and she they gets it instead. They dodge it, technically. They dodge that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is the most technical bullshit. Wow. You would but not expect it to be that they, way. It's the same way with, team. it's the and same it's way with Gamora will dodge the Red Hulk trying to take the revive off of like a Gamora or something. If they have a revive, the first hit will get dodged and that's the right. revive getting taken yeah, and then the true. two hits will hit. It's the same yeah. thing. That's true. It's it still doesn't, an it doesn't action. take effect until it hits it's them. A, it's stupid, but it's a dodgeable action, essentially. Okay. It's just something that we got to remember because it's not really written into it, but you're right. I, 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 I remember playing with Red Hulk. You do the special and it, it doesn't steal it until the, fir, or until the second hit or clear it until the second hit. So yeah, okay, but, that uh, makes sense. Sorry. Big point being they still help you clear the team. They can still do it very reliably and on quite big punch ups at that. So there is value there. Okay. Okay. So they do have good value on offense. Do you think that they should be keeping this on defense in room one? Should we go through the whole list first and see what they have? Let's go let's go see what they hold. We'll yeah. just scroll through real have real fast. Okay. Uh new Avengers, boring, super easy to beat. Uh, Infinity Watch in three, another snooze. And we have the Extreme Black Knight, which everybody suddenly switched to in four. Uh, and then Gamma in five. This is pretty boring, but there's really no way to spice this up. Um, no, I mean, you could throw Dormammu in it, but it doesn't change the match. And I think it's kind of a waste. And then we have Asgardians in six because somebody said don't sleep on Asgardians. And now they're in six. So um, what do you think? What do you think? Should, we, should, should they keep it in one? Is this good? Eh. I mean, I'd prefer Darkhold over Gamma on defense, honestly. So if you have a better team to set up for defense, I would do that and put SD on offense. That's what I did when I made the move of putting the Hive Mind and Superior 6 comps on defense is I pulled SD to offense because they fill the same role, but I get a better defense out of the deal without really losing anything on offense. Okay. We'll leave it. We'll leave it because I don't want to reconstruct an entirely new team. As far as the ISOs go, I think, <clears throat> well, I guess this is room one. So Raiders and Skirmishers, I guess that's okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, I would swap placement with Noir and Black Cat. Well, maybe not. What's I would think? swap placement with Noir and Photon to hide Robbie. Right. That's what I would do. Right. Yep. Because that's a big enough noir. He's not going to die immediately. So you might as well. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll just do a placement swap. But honestly, I think it's good enough. It's kind of boring, but whatever. All right. And then team two. I hate this. I think this is terrible. Yeah. But okay. So 
If they're using the new warriors or new warriors and lizard into one, what are they using on this in two to be efficient? So the, yeah, you can Pegasus this, Eternals this, Tangled this, especially at this size is the problem is it's too small to have an impact. Okay. Well, why don't we replace this with Darkhold then? Yeah. Would that be That's better? Fine. It's going to take more hits to kill the Darkhold team than it will this if they're going to come into it with Internals or something. Specifically, I'd say either Darkhold Loki or Darkhold Blizzard. Because okay. Blizzard at least messes with the uh, Tangled Web counter a bit. Okay. All right, let's try that. We'll try uh, Darkhold Lizard because this is, is boring and easy. This is what it is. We're just skipping over this anymore. I'm not talking about Infinity Watch anymore. It's a waste of my time. And then... Uh, the Black Knight Extreme Gambit Rogue. This thing is such a hot mess. Everything that everyone's told me to try does not one shot for me where I'm punching up at. And I have to sack this team. I absolutely have to sack that Black Knight to make things work in four. So do you guys have a surefire one shot? Has anybody invented one yet? You uh, can safely one shot it with Superior 6 APOC. You can one shot with, I think it was Weaver, Quicksilver, Kang, Apoc, and something else, but it takes like four different teams, like one piece of four teams to beat, so it's nowhere near worth it. Yeah. Yeah, other than Superior 6 Apoc, not really, but my main complaint is that if you do sack this team with invaders, you can just come in here with a straight MOE and laughably roll over this team. Right. If your Kang is big, yes. So, <clears throat> I think that they have enough stuff left over for their offense with this build. That their opponent absolutely has to one-shot this team. And so, I think this is a really good team for them to have in here. I, I the think problem is, is if he his opponent has this same defense, right? Then they both have to sack, right? Right. And then let's say they both have to sack. Then it's essentially an efficiency fight. You're not going to win an efficiency fight when you have a million new Avengers in room two. That's just going to that's going to kick you in the nuts because you're just going to get destroyed by that. So, right. so we got to get rid of this. Right. So I would superior six one and get an 8370 new new warriors two get another 8370 do the hive mind sinister six BTS combo on three sack four then do MOE. APOC five is who gives a shit sus and whoever and Doom. then six all tangled yeah and, and then you know I'm getting a 50 I'm getting a 49 is 900 because I lost 400 points or 800 because I lost 400 points from a sack but we both did right I but think it, so if we can shore this up it's a it's a pretty solid defense otherwise though right what were you gonna say a thing I think the counterpoint to that is that <laughs> only having the one team that apart from one which in a specific counter can be rng but like you said if you bring the appropriate preton it still doesn't matter that you can just sub six apoc four and one shot it it won't be the cleanest fight but if you have apoc and scroll on offense that doesn't matter mm -hmm. like you don't even necessarily have to preton on one if you just bring scroll because no other defense is going to force you to care but i mean if his opponent come if his opponent um has super scroll on defense or superior six on defense or superior six on defense then i i think that uh that dave has a good chance of beating them with room to spare 100 percent, because they'll be forced to sack room four at that point right but he mm -hmm. in a similar match calling back to what doolam said you would end up in that efficiency battle and he should probably spread out some more of his roster power into room two, possibly putting Dorm in that room six in order to give him more bandwidth. I do like because do he just has. I don't think Thor Infinity War is a great fit here. I think we drop Thor Infinity War and put Dorm in here. Right? I think you would replace I don't like, Nova. I don't like Nova in there, honestly. Oh. I think Nova is too good of an offensive weapon. That's just me. Like, Nova's okay. decent in the room, just in general, because he's just a good character. But I feel like that's a loss from offense. Okay. We'll drop Nova. Um, 
I think I don't see like any changes you make to the Gamma team, any subtle changes don't really change the outcome of the match, right? Right, unless I'm your opponent. <laughs> I mean, there could be a case to replace She-Hulk with like Quicksilver just to try to make the new Warriors counter a little sketch, but... Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's almost splitting hairs at the point. I, I think you just throw it in there and let them have it. Um, well, I guess we are with this. We do come here to split hairs, though. Yeah, and it's just down to the point where if your opponent is knowledgeable, and again, sometimes that's an if. Yeah, there's the other relying point. Relying only on four. Nacho Heroes talks about Gamma in room one. Should we? Should we swap the 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 secret defenders, whatever the <clears throat> yeah secret defenders into room five? Put Gamma in one. That way, if Red Hulk goes under the fifty percent to do his moves, it's doing a lot more damage. I would because logistically speaking, it's easier to screw up on Gamma because of Bronze reflexive death proofs he gives on fifty percent, especially in room one. Whereas with SD, typically the counter is already going sideways if they're moving below 50% health without things like blind from new warriors. Right. Okay. So you don't lose anything by moving this team into one and you might gain a little bit of something by, by moving this team into room one and moving this team out of room one into five. So, okay. So let's move this team to room one, leave it the same way it is. Uh, we'll replace it with gamma in here. This we're gonna replace with Darkhold or Darkhold Loki, one of the Darkhold variants, simply because it's a little bit tougher to beat than this. This could be uh, a liability to the score. This is what it is. Uh, in four, th this is a great team. It's the pivotal point that's gonna require either APOC, Superior Six, or uh, a sack. We're moving that Secret Defenders into, in from one into here. God. Uh, and then we're going to get rid of Nova, add Dormammu in here, making it slightly tougher. And also, I want to remember to make a placement swap with Photon and Noir. Does that sound pretty good? Sorry, one last thing that popped up because of a conversation I had with an Alliance mate. Wait, is it dog shit there is potential in room three if you replace me. Nebula with a character like a Quicksilver because now Vulture does nothing. So the Mysterio counter doesn't get the speed up on spawn and you can potentially screw it up with RNG. Yeah, but then okay. your whole, your entire damage is gone because you're not triple tapping. I mean, your yep. damage is gone if they bring the Vulture Mysterio comp anyways, because you aren't triple tapping anything. Rarely do I see this team ever kill anyone on my team when I attack into it. It's got to be way bigger than this in the first place. So this is just a sponge. We're not really trying to beat it. The thing is, though, um, what kind of I mean, so you're using some kind of a sinister six comp into this as it stands, getting the using the vulture, right? And if you drop Nebula, then they no longer really want to use that composition. Doesn't that free up? Well, I guess it doesn't really matter because you're using superior six here, not sinister six. I guess it doesn't change anything. OK. Yeah, but Vulture would probably be good in room four because he would take off the taunt right away from BK. Okay, so then we At would want At that point, you're sacrificing another important part of the superior six is sustain in room four one way or another, though. Especially if you feel the need to try to one-shot it because then you're bringing APOC already. And if you're doing it on a two-tap, Vulture doesn't change that the match would already work. I don't know. I don't know if it's worth it to drop Nebula. Because I'm not sure you would want to bring Vulture into this, like what a theme said. <clears throat> I don't think it really changes the dynamic between three and four, whether you keep or lose Nebula. So then the question becomes, how much, how many more hits does the Infinity Sponge take without Nebula? Because they're not winning, they're not killing anybody, unless you're coming into it with an oh, really underpowered team, right? If this was a two million team, I would say definitely keep Nebula because you might get a couple of kills before they're before you clear this room. 
but at one million, I don't think you're getting any kills with the counters that you bring into this, and Nebula is not really going to be a factor. Maybe they would stay alive longer with somebody else. How many of these are brawlers? It's just I think Gamora, right? Yeah, just Gamora. Oh, okay. I think putting a specifically, I'm thinking of Quicks over here matters because they don't get the on spawn speed up so it makes everything go that much slower mysterio doesn't go before the cleanse happens or the heal so you can start screwing with turn order using the four piece infinity watch and if your qs is massive or at least on par with their team you do open the door to start affecting how much health they walk out of here with mm -hmm. on an efficiency standpoint Well, Ciro makes a good point. Nebula evades are a factor in the equation, too. I, I don't know. I don't know if, if swapping out Nebula is worth it. I'm wondering what that would do to your opponent mentally when they come in here and they see a big fat Quicksilver in place of Nebula. I wonder what they think. I wonder what they, they go, hmm, how's that going to change things? Yeah, efficiency. That's right, bro. <laughs> Like, the point isn't necessarily that it's all of a sudden going to beat teams it wouldn't. Right. The it's, point it's is that now teams. it makes the counter less effective. Less effective. It's going to give people probably a bit more pause. People with smaller Mysterios won't just walk in because he might just get deleted by Gamora special if your Gamora is much bigger than their Mysterio. Mm -hmm. And then they have problems. Yeah. All right, I think it's worth a mention. I think it's definitely worth a mention for people to tinker around with if they want to try something new. I mean, my God, anything to make the Infinity Watch in 3 something different, I guess. But we're going to talk about Lizard removes the RNG as a counter into this, so you drop Dagger for Lizard. Over here, uh, we could go... Did you say Darkhold Lizard? Yeah, because it can mess with the tank build efficiency a bit it still doesn't stop it but it does start screwing with who Make they it a little, bit, a little bit weird so okay so we'll talk yeah. about a dark hold lizard in here in this, I can make the joke we're going to replace Nebula with Lizard, but then I'll say no, for reals, just a big Quicksilver is an option, but I'm not certain about it. Then in four, this is fantastic. I like it just the way it is. In five, this is the Gamma team, but we're going to move Gamma into room one. We're going to double check to make sure that there's skirmishers and raiders just in case. I don't know. Should we leave anybody as a healer for room one? If this straight Gamma is in room one? Or should they all be skirmishers I mean, raiders? Hulk healers probably fine. I mean, still healers. You got no damage healers on the team. Hulk's not doing damage. She Hulk definitely ain't doing damage. So her getting the extra two hundred percent ain't gonna do anything. Okay. And then, I mean, Hulk as a striker as a raider could be something because he hits with his special, uh, and then he heals. So that could be something. But eh. Okay. They're not there to do damage. They're there to just to uh, be punching bags until Red Hulk goes. Okay. All right, Zero. I see you. Um, and then in six, we're going to drop Nova for Dormammu to make it a little bit tougher, a little bit tougher. <clears throat> All right, I think I can do this. And then we'll get back to dicking around because that's what I really want to do. All right, I'll be right back, gents. <laughs> All right, let's record a video, shall we?